Hello and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to help you to open your mind, get curious about yourself and raise your consciousness levels. Through these conversations, we hope that you will go on an inward journey to discover the truth of who you are and become the conscious creator of your life. I am your host, Karen Maloney, and I work as an inside out coach, mentor and guide, helping women to revolutionize their internal chatter and create a life they love. Listen to the podcast on Apple, Spotify or whatever platform you choose and be sure to like, subscribe, review and share the podcast. Check out my website as well, soulpowerlight.com for more info. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. It's me, Karen Maloney, and I'm so delighted to have you here for another episode. And I have two wonderful ladies joining me today who are the founders of Peace Unleashed, Nilu Naderi and Ellie Shoja. And it's another super, super conversation again today. I know I say that every week, but I mean, when it's the truth, what else can I say? So as mentioned, Nilu and Ellie are the founders of Peace Unleashed and their dream is to usher in a world in which every human lives from a place of joy, peace and groundedness and all actions are aligned with inspiration. And to achieve this dream, Nilu and Ellie created beautiful, high vibrational products, courses and content that help you remove the barriers you've built that keep you separated from your source of power so you can become the powerful creator you have come into this life to be. To escape religious persecution, Nilu and her family fled from Iran when she was just five years old. A family history of mental illness, poverty, violence and a broken home and her own battle with depression and suicidal ideation set her on a 15 year journey seeking refuge in spirituality, philosophy and various healing modalities. Ali, who is also known as a modern day Rumi, is the daughter of an international con man who moved 25 times from the age of 9 to 11 and lived in refugee camps in Germany. Ellie suffered from severe nervous tics, anger and mood disorders and suicidal ideation by the age of 12. What began as a personal healing journey turned into an 18 year deep dive into various modalities of psychology, philosophy and spirituality. And I really just love this conversation with these two ladies who are doing and have been doing incredible work. And as they mentioned themselves, they had somewhat interesting, unconventional and traumatic upbringings, but that both left them with this this deep inner desire or this seeking for peace. And that is what they do now in helping others as well through their work with Peace Unleashed. So many incredible talking points throughout this conversation, but I suppose a lot of it centered around fear and how it is a luxury that we cannot afford. And when we live in fear, how it's a byproduct of not knowing the other and it causes this separation and the the biggest separation being that separation from ourselves. And, And they talk about what it costs us really to live in that fear. But going deeper as well, they talk about exactly what inner peace is versus being calm or feeling relaxed. The difference in that and how it is a true connection to our higher self, that formless, invisible, intangible, non-physical aspect of ourselves. And from there, we went into even a deeper conversation of what it is to be human and how we don't even really fully understand what it means to be human and the miracle that it is and how to use and train our mind and be deliberate creators in our life. So a super fascinating conversation that I really believe everyone will get some nuggets from. Super interesting. And towards the end as well, Ellie shares a beautiful analogy about our inner peace and how it's not something we need to search for. It's something that's always there, but can often get clouded like a storm. And she just uses a beautiful analogy and shares some questions that can help us to come back to and 
reconnect to that inner peace again. So I loved this conversation, a really, really beautiful, inspiring and I believe hopeful conversation as well, because there really is so much power. And I believe this is the onus on all of us now. This is what we're being asked to do is to reconnect to this, this truth of us, this, this core, this non-physical, timeless, energetic, spiritual part of us. Because even as they mentioned in at one stage in the conversation, how Peace Unleashed came about, different events that were happening, they saw that, well, it's no good to just fight. Now is time to rise and to tap into that inner peace. So enjoy and you can check out more on their work on peaceunleashed.com. But as always, I will have everything linked on the show notes as well. On my website, soulpowerlight.com. Enjoy. Welcome everybody and thanks for tuning in for another episode. I have two wonderful ladies joining me today, Nilu and Ellie. First of all, you're very welcome and thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, Karen. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you both today. I love your project or your company, Peace Unleashed. I Just the name and everything is fantastic and we'll delve into that in this conversation, the work that you're doing there. But Maybe just because you both have really super interesting backgrounds as well, maybe you'd like to explain a little to the listeners as well. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, we both have had very interesting, <laughs> unconventional, some people might call it traumatic, some people might call it full of just contrast uh, types of childhood. Um, so my dad was a international con man. I moved over 30 times before immigrating to the U.S. at the age of 15. I was suicidal by the age of 12 and then somehow in my 20s found spirituality, psychology, philosophy and, and deep dove into these worlds as a way to kind of uh, find peace, mm. find inner peace. Yeah. And, uh, and I did. Woo, yay! <laughs> yay. And to the point of then about five years ago, uh, Nidu and I, who's one of my oldest friends, uh, we met actually when I first uh, moved to the U.S. And uh, so we started this company called Peace Unleashed in order to share a lot of these inner peace strategies that mm -hmm. we have discovered. I love that. Um, so many things you mentioned there as well that we'll come back to. But that was one of the things actually that was in my uh -huh. mind as well. I was like, I wonder if they know each other for a long time or uh -huh. if this is the project that brought each other together. So that's amazing as well that you're actually lifelong friends as well. Definitely. There, your intuition was right, Karen. Yeah, lovely. Um, and then Nilu, what about just to, to set yeah. the context? Definitely. Uh, so similar, uh, unconventional trauma, but uh, very different uh, types of experiences, mm -hmm. but, you know, underlying value, I think we both were seeking peace. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my own battles with mental health, you know, for for a long time, even in my adult life. And uh, I, Ellie, just essentially one day I was living in New York, and we were like talking about the same thing over and over again, you know, she's like, Nilu, you need to read the power of now. Nilu, mm. you need to read The Power of Now. Nilu, you need to, like literally every conversation like ended with that. And eventually I wow. did and uh, it's been a journey since. So mm. so glad to be doing this work together. Yeah, well, like that, that's brilliant that you are doing this work together and that you decided to come together and do it. And, you know, as well that you finally read that book. <laughs> Because no, but that's a really, yeah, that's a really important point as well, because it's so funny. So many of us in our journeys, in our lives, no matter what happens, you know, we, we keep having the same conversations often with people, with whatever peers, and we keep getting the same advice or the same suggestions. And sometimes we don't follow them. It takes us a while. But then when we finally do, you know, it really can shift us in to another space. And that always comes back to, I suppose, the essential underlying factor as well and everything you know of taking action you know if we're not taking action on these things we're not going anywhere and it's very hard to to move forward in a sense so um <laughs> yeah so true 
we kind of like fight the thing that's like the best for us. You know, it's like, oh, I should start going to the gym. I should start eating healthy. But somehow the, the, the things that make us stay in that state of inertia, mm. uh, it, you know, seem to be easier. But at what cost? Right. Yeah. And at a huge cost. At, at what <laughs> cost are we, you know, not doing the things that are going to make us feel better? Totally. Well, let's dive mm-hmm. into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, what are, because it's so true, we do all tell ourselves these things. And I think anytime we judge ourselves in a way of, oh, I should be doing this and I should be doing that, you know, it's for me, the energy is very restrictive. And it's like, whoa, because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very much a person of energy. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm already failing, even though I haven't tried. Yeah. So I suppose, like you mentioned there, you know, we're, we're fighting it, but at what cost? So what does it lead to for a lot of people that you've seen as well through your work? I think uh, the biggest cost is just every time you go down those uh, lower frequency rabbit holes, Mm -hmm. you're strengthening those neurotransmitters, you're strengthening those thoughts, you're strengthening those under underlying beliefs that are not serving you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, um, it's tempting because it's familiar. And it uh, it's what we know, and it's we've somehow tied it to our identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that is a, a price that people don't really see that they're paying, mm-hmm. is that every time they do it, they're strengthening what's keeping them down, what's holding them back. And so it's just mm-hmm. going to get harder the next time. Yeah, so true. So and- powerful. There's a saying that we like to say at Peace Unleashed, and that is that fear is a luxury you cannot afford Mm -hmm. and when you first hear that you're like wait what does that mean you know (laughs) like what do you mean by that what do you mean fear is a luxury but when you think about it it really is Mm -hmm. you know we kind of like cater to fear and doubt when we have kind of the freedom to do it you know in a way like if you're stranded in the middle of a desert you don't have the luxury of sitting there and saying, you know, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of the desert. It's so hot. I, you're you're going to have to move. Yeah. <laughs> like you're going to have to do something to get yourself out of that desert. But on our in, a, in our daily lives, we have become so accustomed to the luxuries of time, mm-hmm. of doing the things that that we want to be doing in that moment that we don't realize that when we are catering to the fear, we are choosing to pay for it with our time, with our well-being, mm. with our, you know, um, mental peace. You know, we're, we're paying for that fear, for that doubt with what is most precious to us, yeah. right? So it is a luxury. It could be millions of dollars. And we are spending that equivalent of our well-being on, you know, choosing the fear to be in our lives, choosing the doubt to be in our lives, to choosing those things that are not serving us to continue and remain in our lives. Mm. Yeah, it's so true. And again, you know, I know on my own journey, it really made so much sense to me when I learned a bit about neuroscience and the working of our brain as well. And our brain is just programmed to keep us in survival so that means anytime we want to step outside our comfort zone we will encounter fear like it's a totally natural thing but then that's our work and that's the piece in cultivating the relationship with ourselves to know oh hey this is not a real fear this is just my brain kicking up trying to keep me in the old patterns but I know these patterns no longer serve me so I need to move forward anyway and the more we do that we move out of that fear space again it still comes up I'm still a person who's full of fear but again I can debunk it and step in and talk to myself and be like oh come on Karen this is a story you're creating in your head like this is not the truth kind of thing so just even to mention that as well that it's totally normal and to know that it's natural as well and that's just the way our, our brain is programmed but again we have the capacity to reprogram and that's what it's all about and I love that. Yeah, fear is a luxury that you you cannot afford. And it kind of ties into, I can't remember who said it, but about inner peace as well. Like anything that costs us our inner peace is just too expensive. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Absolutely. yes, because it, it is the most important thing. So going down the peace road then, how did mm-hmm. Peace Unleashed come about? Um, yeah, it, it was started about 
five years ago, 2016, uh, there was a lot of chaos happening in the news uh, with uh, Black Americans and the police force. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the media was just making it worse. They were just putting kerosene on on the situation. It Uh, sounds like just what's happening, you know, has been happening again the last year. Yeah, you know, if you don't fix it, it gets worse, mm, right? The, yeah. the life is even harder in the face. And that's essentially what happened in 2020. Mm, yeah. uh, but long story short, uh, we decided we needed to do something about it. And uh, we came to a conclusion after doing a meditation together in my apartment that we need to help people access their inner peace because that's the only way, you know, that we're going to rise above this situation. It's not fighting and creating more separation. It's tapping into our own our own inner peace. Yeah, yeah. Fear is a byproduct of not not understanding and not knowing the other. You know, mm-hmm. we, we make the other into the other. You know, and yeah. and uh, when when there's compassion, when there is connection, when there is love, th- the other becomes part of, of us. You know, we we start seeing our similarities rather than our differences. And when, when we kind of go unchecked and, and we start fixating on all the ways we are different, and it can be as trivial as the color of your skin, it can be as trivial as what you believe in, right? The, the, these things, anything that separates us by definition is not where we are the same, mm-hmm. right? And, and that separation, when we look at the world and we see separation, we see that very much as a, a symptom of being separated from ourselves, yeah. uh, as a symptom of rejecting ourselves. Yeah. Like if I have this deep-seated um, self-criticism and self-hatred and inability to feel worthy and lovable, then of course I am going to look at the world and I'm going to project that unlovableness and unworthiness onto the the people that I think are different from me, right? It's my defense mechanism almost. So so for us, it was very natural. This is a symptom of the separation people are experiencing with themselves. So then the solution is uh, we got to go inward. Mm. The solution is always we got to go inward. So then we started creating meditations. Uh, we, and meditation experiences, yeah, uh, in person experiences and on online for the larger world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, over the course of the year, I think we created over seventy-seven freestanding meditations. We had them free as a podcast, and then we also had them on Insight Timer. They became one of the uh, most downloaded meditations on Insight Timer at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, very quickly, we hit over a million downloads. And, and we saw that, wow, there is, there's really a need for this kind of a work. I mean, there's a lot of people doing a lot of amazing things, you know, and this is our tiny contribution yeah. to the dialogue of inner peace in, in the way that we can, you know. And Karen, at, at the time, uh, you know, we were both working in our respective fields. I was working in healthcare consulting. Ellie ran a production company. Mm-hmm. And so this was started off as very much a passion yeah. uh, and a and a calling that we we just couldn't ignore anymore, and just and and its momentum picked up month after month after month, and creating this in-person community especially was so rewarding for us. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. brilliant, um, and I love that it was you know that just goes to show the power of when we truly follow a calling as well or something that's yeah. coming up for us you know when we're like I can't just sit by anymore, I need to do something, and we do it like look at the way it's just taken off like that's so fantastic and you may call it a teeny tiny dent of what you're doing but it's still epic you know you're still doing something as opposed to going around in circles and just talking about how difficult or challenging or horrible or awful things are and you know that's how change happens as well when we do step up and do something different you know and that's applicable to all of us even in our individual lives even with our friends or families or how we speak or using language whatever it is and you know I love how you said as well it is everything stems from us and that's what I do as well in my work that's why I call myself an inside out coach because through my own journey as well I realized oh hell it's like the perception and the filter and the interpretations that I have of myself, which can often be very unconscious, and they are until you uncover them, is mm-hmm. what we project on the world, just exactly like you said. So 
you know, again, it comes back to that fear, that separation, you know, is it really true? And it's not, but we have to do the work to do that. So I love all that and going inward. And I'd love to know for both of you, because again, inner peace for a lot of people who haven't yeah. experienced, they might be like, well, what is that? You know, do you differentiate or how would you explain inner peace versus calm? Versus calm. Yeah. Calmness. Yeah, um, that's my Irish accent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so inner inner peace is, uh, I see it as a connection to the self. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can be calm throughout the day and you can be, uh, you can experience calmness without really going too deep into yourself Mm -hmm. right so you can have relaxing moments you can have calm moments throughout the day uh inner peace i think goes a little deeper than that and it goes into kind of the source of the separation and it's a healing of the separation with the self if that makes sense um (laughs) when, when we experience inner peace uh, we are experiencing a connection to the part of us that is non-physical, mm. that is uh, infinite, that uh, contains our ability to experience life uh, as a higher state being. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, the, the the being that can be here and feel satisfied, feel appreciation, feel love, uh, feel excitement, and and. Th- that sense of just the self as this powerful thing, you know? And and I think as humans, we don't experience inner peace very often because we see ourselves small. We see yeah. ourselves as finite, as a human, the physical human that exists in linear time, has a beginning and an expiration date. And, uh, and whatever you do is uh, what you did and whatever you don't do is what you didn't do. It's, it's very kind of, we see ourselves very, very small. And that's yeah. uh, evidenced also by the way we kind of talk to each other. You know, it's like we meet each other and without uh, first acknowledging what a marvel of an infinite being this person is who's in front of me. We, we try to assess their value based on their net worth, based on their credentials and so forth, disregarding the real important parts of what makes us special, which is we are consciousness. <laughs> we yeah. are the energy of creation. Like that's what we are. Am I getting a little bit no, no, you're, up there? I, no, I, I have got the biggest smile on my face and what actually just went through my head was like, I am so happy I asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> because for me it's it's bang on the money right Karen I you know I know you talk a lot about energy and at this point it's 2021 you know it's common knowledge that yeah. we are energy that everything around us is energy but I think people say that without really understanding what that means mm-hmm. and experiencing what that is mm-hmm. uh and because the the current situation what we physically see and feel with our physical bodies is so upfront and prevalent for us that we for, we tend to forget in those times that is most important not to forget yes. that like the greater part of us is actually non-physical and you can't see it with your eyes you know and so somehow we devalue that mm-hmm. i think i have in the book atomic habits i read that we have like percentage wise way more receptors for visual things than we do for any uh, any rest of our senses so i mm-hmm. think um if you know that as a human being then you're going to realize that you're going to over prioritize things that you can see mm-hmm. but remembering that you're actually an energetic non-physical being as well and that part of you is greater than the physical yes 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 and you know i think well, honestly, what I believe now, I'm like, that's why we came here as well. It's part of the journey to remember the truth of who we are, because it is true. We get completely separated from that timeless, infinite spirit soul aspect of ourselves you know we are a spirit connected to our body we are a spirit having a human experience you know this is our our biological spacesuit to be able to be here on this plane at this time and experience all these experiences and especially in western society like you mentioned the word nilu it has been devalued it hasn't been given credit everything has been focused on 
the physical mental aspects you know what you can touch taste think about strategize logicalize and that's the masculine energy as well and i truly believe that's why we've got to the point of where we are in society as well the tipping point because it's been all that go achieve strive forgetting the whole bigger aspect of ourselves so i believe that's the bigger picture of the shift that we're going through now as well it is to help us all to go in again within to get to know that infinite that soul part of us that is not separate and like you mentioned mentioned as well Ellie healing healing that separation of feeling like two selves and it is that ego mind versus higher mind and it's merging and integrating the two and becoming a whole being and it's just epic and I'd love to know as well because there's like you mentioned it is intangible so Nilo I think you said it's it's through experience you know it's it's a feeling it's an inner feeling it's not something that cognitively we can understand but living the experience and having it is a completely different kettle of fish, as we'd say in Ireland. So, and there's lots of ways to experience that. So I'd love to know why you chose meditation or why meditation was the path that came up for you to to experience or to use through Peace Unleashed. Yeah. And Karen, if I can just make one more point on what yeah, we of just course. talked about. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. we can take that. So if anyone is listening <clears throat> and they're in like, studied math or science or engineering, I think the best way I can explain it is I studied physics in college. The first two years, all you study is Newtonian physics, classical physics. Mm -hmm. And it's like a perfect closed environment where there's gravity and there's the G force. And, you know, all the equations are really simple and easy to understand. Well, easy. (laughs) (laughs) And then in year three, this is literally my first lecture in year three, the professor goes up, writes six equations on, on the board and says, this is all you need to know from the first two years of study. Everything else is not relevant when it comes to quantum physics. Wow. And I think that's part of the human physical, you know, like we have to understand how to use this body, right? We have to learn yeah. how to walk, walk, you know, exist in this physical, in this physical world. But once you have that foundation, then it's time to move on and say, okay, now, now that I understand that yeah. fundamentally, what else what Mm -hmm. you know there's so much about this world that we don't understand and we can't explain with classical physics um and as you were talking i'm like if you know if there's any kind of science quantitative people listening i think that will help bridge that gap yeah yeah thanks for that no it's so true and you know and i suppose the field of quantum physics is opening up more and more now but you know it's so funny as well because when you think about it we all yes and i know i was there as well i i struggled i lived in my mind completely although i was very intuitive and i would follow these pangs but i didn't understand it i was still always trying to figure it out in my head which you know left me in all sorts of crazy scenarios because like you mentioned you can't figure it out most of the time you know it is that trusting it's like intuition is a is a faculty way higher than our intellect but we'll never have the information beforehand you know before we trust it it may reveal itself afterwards you know we can look back and see oh all the dots connect to that so i completely understand when people struggle to kind of get a grasp on this as well but then when you look at the likes of wi-fi I'm like, that, you know, boggles my mind. I'm like, come on. And you don't question Wi-Fi. You're like, how can that work? There's nothing around. It's totally invisible. I can hold a phone in my hand that nothing lives in that phone. Everything is made instantly that I can send a message to another person in the whole other side of the world. They can get it instantly. Like, what? And there's no line. There's no nothing. So it's like, you know, that's always whenever... I get lost sometimes going, hmm, really? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, come on. Like you say, there is so much that we we don't understand. And actually, the more I learn, the more I can say, oh, my God, we're, we're totally clueless. We think we're all powerful <laughs> and we're so great and we are the king species. And it's like, no, like <laughs> wow. there's there's so much else. I actually don't even think that we know what the human actually is. I don't I, I don't think we've even touched the tip of the iceberg of what the human is capable of. Yeah. You know, what it is. We have no idea what the human is because um, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like uh, if you have a really fast race car, right? And then you put uh, those things on the wheels that lock it into place. And what, what is that called? It's a, they, they, yeah, they, they, they lock 
off the wheels so they can't turn and then uh, you don't put fuel into it and uh, you know and maybe you get it to like move a couple of inches and um and, and most of the time it's just sitting there that is the human right now it's so most our, of the time it's just sitting yeah, there. yeah. Our, yeah. Uh, the way our uh we are entertaining like the world is kind of upside down because it's fear based uh i think news helps it stay upside down and as a result of these kind of beliefs that have been internalized by everyone things like you have to work hard for the things that you want you actually don't the 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 fact is the more you you align with the non physical you the easier things open up mm-hmm. you know and, and the greater the wealth and success that you achieve you know so spirituality and success kind of go hand in hand but then mm-hmm. we're like no success goes with hard work and spirituality goes with like there's all this upside down messaging right yeah. and as a result of it we are locking down the human it's like we have a straight jacket on it yeah. you know we have no idea what the human is and yeah. consciousness is shifting mm-hmm. it's a 2020 has been a wonderful year of awakening a lot of people have been waking up uh, as a result of uh, the the systems that have been kind of like accepted falling apart we were forced to look inward so a lot of people have been forced to look inward mm-hmm. and a lot of people are finding that they are a lot more powerful experientially not in their heads but experientially they're they're realizing that oh my gosh i'm a lot more powerful a lot more intuitive a lot more creative a lot more capable uh and just by like letting go of control they're seeing that things are starting to work out in their lives in magical ways and and so a lot of this magical stuff is also happening because mm-hmm. we're we're this is shifting how far away are we from actually understanding what the human is i have no idea but what i do know is we're operating probably at less than 0.0001% yeah. capacity <laughs> capability oh yeah it's um yeah it's so true and like i say i love dr bruce lipton and you know how he talks about i, I think one of the best descriptions uh, he uses when it comes to humans as well he's like we're basically a skin covered petri dish um he's like you were a living organism and what that means exactly is you know skin covered petri dish as in every thought Mm -hmm. every emotion every food every conversation every interaction every everything our body is listening and that's why we are conscious Mm -hmm. creators we're always creating but the fact is most of us are asleep and like you you mentioned there we're stuck in old beliefs and limitations and subconscious conditioning that we've been programmed with from a young age to think these things like oh work is hard or there's no man good men in the world or whatever it is money is hard to come by but then that like you mentioned so many times that's the inward journey in debunking our own stories in Mm -hmm. moving beyond our comfort zones to actually know and begin to understand some of our capacity and even they talk about as well like disease and things like that it's actually five percent genetic and like 95 percent environmental and that's Mm -hmm. how we grew up in the environments what we're eating what we're consuming mentally physically emotionally like everything you know so it's Oh, it's so fascinating. And like you mentioned as well, success and spirituality go hand in hand. And I know for myself, I remember years ago when I was like living in my mind, it was all like, you know, this idea of competition. And oh, my God, if someone got something or something else, it was like there wasn't enough to go around. I would feel bad. I'd be like, I'd want to be happy for them. But I'm like, why them and not me? And all these stories that we go through. Whereas like you mentioned, when when you connect to that infinite part of ourselves now i can look back and go oh my god that's such crazy thinking because there is no such thing as competition really like there's enough to go around because the way i do something no matter if everyone in the world is doing it i do it my way because i bring my experiences my energy so it's fine you know so it's yeah it's such a an interesting journey for sure and i definitely agree that we're we're very limited in what we know about ourselves and I say I always say I'm like this our body is the greatest piece of technology we will ever own in our whole entire lives but again we don't know how to use it you know so that's that's the journey as well and then what are some of the benefits 
I suppose that you have seen through your work with Peace Unleashed and how it has helped people as well? So I think, you know, with meditation, the reason we we kind of went to that first, because there's a lot of different things, Mm -hmm. you know, that that we could have done. Um, But that was like fundamental was to help people, one, recognize that they're deliberate creators, that they're creating Mm -hmm. in every moment, mostly by default. But if they want to be deliberately creating, they'd have to take control of this mind of theirs, right? Mm -hmm. This this monkey brain, this amazing machine (laughs) that Mm -hmm. somehow we've fallen slave to uh, over the years of uh, lack of mental discipline. And so that was the primary reason uh, we started with meditation was to help people access their inner peace by quieting that mind. And we really believe that the world has overcomplicated meditation. Yeah. And, uh, and we learned that we kind of like understood that on a basic level, but the more we started teaching it, uh, the way we teach it, we realized, Oh, no one's explaining it in such basic terminology because it's there's so much out there now with like Mm. essential oils you know wearing you know Mm. wrapping your head uh you know if you're going to do kundalini do you wear crystals do you not wear crystals do you have Mm. to have tarot cards like there's just so many different um factors that confuse people who are brand new to that space so um essentially it's mind training and i think some of the language that we use Mm. helps debunk a lot of the myths and that, that's why we had started with meditation. Mm. And uh, and as far as your other question, Karen, about what has been one of the most rewarding things for us, um, I, I think that's the question you asked. Uh, we have a book club, which has been really quite amazing. When we got into the pandemic, we had to kind of rethink a lot of the stuff we were doing because we were doing a lot of in-person workshops, mm. talks at uh, conferences and so forth. And uh, and all of those went away. They all we had so many yeah. things planned for last March and June. <laughs> yes. I, I mean April, and um, and suddenly our schedules became completely barren. You know, mm. and so we we thought, okay, what do we do with all of that? Uh, we started teaching our workshops online, and um, and then we recorded our most popular workshop, which was the meditation essentials workshops where we break down the science of meditation, why it works, how it works, how it changes your brain, your heart, your body, your physiology, and then the the step-by-step technique of what do you do in meditation when your eyes are closed? Nobody ever actually explains that to you. So that was one of our most popular workshops. We put it on tape and available on our website. But the probably the most uh, amazing thing has been how our book club has grown because it went from an in-person book club to a global book club. And we've been reading transformative books since the beginning. We've read Joe Dispenza's those becoming supernatural. We read Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now, Bernie Brown's um, Daring Greatly. And as a result of it going global, we started being able to bring the actual authors yeah. to talk to our book club. Amazing. So we just read, uh, we just read um, My Stroke of Insight by Dr. Jill Taylor. And she came and spoke to our book club, and it was one of the most incredible experiences for our members to be able to ask questions that they were that they were having while they were going while we were going through the book, you know. And it was really nice uh, that they knew she's going to come at the end of the book and talk to them because they were jotting down questions, writing notes, and and it, it was just this the most incredible experience, which I don't think would have been possible for us had it not been for the mm-hmm. pandemic. Yeah. one of those little gifts that we received and we were able to kind of pass on amazing love books love book clubs mm-hmm. so that is brilliant and you know that's one of the things of being able to go with what life throws up because again we were all kind of caught off guard for want of a better word and all had to readjust and it's you know finding the beauty within it as well and making things work because again you know life is always in flux life is actually always changing we have no idea what's going to happen in the next second and just before we wrap up you know that's that's a truth that is a truth and that's not to live in fear but 
the reality is none of us know what's going to happen at any, any moment. Every moment is just unfolding right now and now and now, you know. So when you mentioned how people often overcomplicate meditation, what is some of the language that you use that can maybe help break it down just quickly for some listeners to be yeah. able to know that inner peace, regardless of the environment that they're in? Yeah. So, um, so two, two things I'll share with you real quick. Uh, one is that peace is always present. You know, this idea that we have to go outside of ourselves to, to find inner peace, that is uh, this false notion that kind of keeps us away from having inner peace. So think yeah. of your inner peace as the sun, right? The sun never goes away. It's always there, right? But there are times when there are clouds around. There are times when there's a snowstorm. There is a time when there is a lot of rain or hail. And think of those as your emotions, right? So, so your emotions might flare up. You might have uh, a storm of anger, of frustration, of depression. You might have a fog of depression, for example, right? But within that emotion, underneath it, the sun is still there. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is the key yeah. here is that the sun never goes away. Your emotions might ob obscure your view of it, but that peace never goes away. So then the question doesn't become, how do I go somewhere and find my peace? The question becomes, what is the storm that is within me? Let me acknowledge it. Oh, mm -hmm. look, there's a snowstorm. Let me take kind of um, a, a moment and acknowledge that even though I'm experiencing this emotion in this moment, this is not the reality of me the same way that when there's a snowstorm, that's not the reality of the world. Yeah. You're, when, when you have a snowstorm, you don't say, oh my gosh, now I'm always going to, the, the, the rest of my life is going to be in snow, right? You don't, you don't say that. You know that the sun's going to come out, right? So, so just kind of switching our thinking around that and saying, this is a transient thing. This emotion is going to pass. Let me just observe it and allow it pass through me. Uh, that shortens the duration of that storm within us significantly. Yeah, and to add to that from Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor's last book, yeah, she actually <clears throat> says it takes up to 90 seconds for mm -hmm. an emotion to pass through us yeah. and, yeah. and, and the, for the body to do whatever it has to do. And so during those 90 seconds, if you can just allow for it to pass, uh, like the, let the storm pass and then come back to your sun, come back to your peace, you're good. Anything that happens after that is, is us feeding into and holding on to those emotions mm -hmm. and those thoughts that are strengthening the emotions. And I think that was like a, such a brilliant way for her to explain, uh, explain the situation because we think we are our emotions and that we just have to fall mercy to them when they show up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. are uh, that state of peace. You're not mm -hmm. the emotion. Um, and, and the more we fight, the emotion and the more uh, we uh, hate it or uh, are upset by Judge it, ourselves. Um, yeah, the more we make that emotion mean something about us. Oh, I, I feel small, therefore I am small. You know, I feel unworthy, therefore I am unworthy. The more I, I put, um, I use the emotion to justify things that are limiting that I'm putting after those words I am, the more we are strengthening the storm. Uh, the way to allow it to pass is by just allowing it to pass and knowing that the reality of who you are is the is the sunshine. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, is that state of underneath it. Such a beautiful analogy. It's so true, though, you know, that peace is always there. But again, it takes us knowing and connecting to the bigger part of us, mm -hmm. which is that timeless, infinite mm -hmm. spiritual being to really experience that as well, because like you mentioned, that peace is always there and love and compassion and kindness and oneness. But again, that is the journey. That is the inner journey. And once we can connect and cultivate and build that relationship, well, then it becomes easier. That doesn't mean you can, well, maybe people can live there all the time, but life happens as well. We get challenged, yeah. we get knocked off and we're in the fear, we're in the panic, we're in the anxiety. Fine. But how quick do we get back in connecting that inner peace? And like that, those 90 seconds, 
you know, scientifically, that's that's what they say the surge is. So if you can just breathe through it, like you're saying, allow it, observe it, just be with it. Don't try to judge it, fight it, run away from it. Then it actually dissipates. And, you know, as a person who was emotionally shut down for my whole life, this was like the greatest like learning for me I was like what so I get it when people are like you believe your emotions and you have no control over them like that we absolutely do what a super fascinating conversation I honestly could keep talking to you for so much longer I have so many other questions but maybe another time we'll pick up the the conversation so it's been an absolute pleasure and if either of you feel there's anything left to share please do but otherwise please share where people can find out more about your work as well uh, I, I want to thank you, Karen, for facilitating this conversation. It's been such a pleasure to be on your show. And uh, we both separately found your show. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh, my gosh, we, we need to be on uh, on there talking to her because mm-hmm. your energy is just so uplifting, so incredible. And what you're doing in the world is so important. So we really appreciate you uh, having us on. Oh, well, the pleasure has been all mine as well. Like I was saying, the universe obviously conspired to have us all together here for a conversation. And it's been so empowering and everything. So it's a pleasure. Yeah, Karen, it's, you know, it's evident that it takes a level of deep understanding to be able to ask those questions so that your audience can tap in because you've, you've experienced this, you've lived through this, and it's, it's clear in the way you facilitate it today. Thank you so oh, much. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> the journey you just go with life and it teaches you everything it's the best school (laughs) but again it comes back to that self-responsibility and we have to do the work we have to be willing to show up for ourselves we have to be willing to say you know what this this is kind of shit i i'm not okay with just feeling the you know and it's that self-discovery of there has to be something more is this it is this it is this all there is and i know it's those questions and who am i that you know sent me in so many existential crises nearly but ultimately it was all perfect and I'm just so eternally grateful that I can hold this space and help others and have conversations like this to help others through and guide them as well it's it's everything yeah that's so wonderful and as far as your other question of how people can connect with us it's basically peace unleashed everything so (laughs) peaceunleashed.com to visit our website and if you're interested in the book club you can join the book club there and if you want the meditation essentials um, master class you can pick it up there and uh, peace unleashed on instagram we share love notes with you and uh, messages of love and peace unleashed on youtube where we have a bunch of free meditations for you to check out and some fun uh funnier videos too uh <laughs> we have interviews with thought leaders and uh, we started a web series uh, that we put on there called it's in the cards where we do an oracle card reading for somebody who hasn't asked for one and frankly doesn't care (laughs) our fun uh yeah outlet during 2020 (laughs) amazing well look life is all about fun as well and i think we've all been shown that like you know why be so serious yeah life is serious Mm -hmm. enough but again we can still bring the fun to it no matter what is happening and again for me that comes back to the bigger connection to that truth that peace that stillness that timelessness within us in the first place absolutely so ladies it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much and keep doing your incredible work thank you thank you karen thank you karen thank you for tuning in to this week's episode be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you get notified every time a new show is released Get more information on this week's guest as well on my website www.soulpowerlight.com.